use a target like this for more maiming type stuff. So gouging, ripping, tearing, biting. It's very arduous for this. It's also very useful to practice stuff like clinch motion to chin rip type of stuff. Right, but for now we're just going to start with striking, impacting. But what I want to work is striking from attachment. So the first thing he's going to do is he's going to feed me this target and you're going to hit it with a good starter for 10. He's going to give you a staggered step and then he's going to cover the line of the face which replicates you hit the dude in the head and now he's covered up. If he's covered up now, that high line target is no longer available. So one option that you have is to immediately go low and take a low target, hence the principle of high low, or you would clear the barrier so that you could hit the target again. This is where a combative trapping might come in. Understand? So here, if I say I'll hit him for a start for 10, by just hitting him, palm it in the face, and then he covers the line. Yeah? So I'm hitting him here, he's covered the line from here, I'll clear the line, hit him again and again. Understand? Your clearing of the line here should be both hands. Just take two big gross motor bear balls and pull it down. Give them a fucking whiplash on that shit. From there now, attach to the same target and beat it down. Alternatively, your attachment can be the arm. So from here, as soon as I clear this, I maintain grip. Hit it again and again and again. I want you to try both. So here's the first drill. First drill, come here to me. Going to palm strike. So we'll cover the line. Clear with both hands, slap them down, index the facial target, hit it with three hammer fists. Right? Looks like this. So from here I am, out here, clear it. Here, make sure you employ forward pressure. Second drill, I hit it, clear the line, this time my attachment is his arm. Understand? Mm -hmm. So I go from here, hit it, clear this, beat on it. Alright? So you're doing from there we're going to take this up to a much more robust resistant deal but for now that's all i want one more time <laughs> go <laughs> right so it's random now you've got four times two <laughs> straight two that way right, so one at a time going two yeah yeah tiny two do you understand randomly you do this you might do it once you might do it twice it's up to you okay when you're ready. So that fucking wait, just wait. Yeah, so many away from an attachment, I would recommend that you keep it at head height, you reinforce it with the other hand, right? What I'm looking to get into you here is the stop button. I want you to feel the stop button, right? So what I want you to employ, can you hit the ground or not? Right, what I want you to employ, just do one, is if during the sequence, so you're not going to do it, you could do it anywhere between one and five strikes. But let's go between three and five, because I want you to get the feel of hitting, right? So in three and five strikes, if I'm attached to this subject here, and I'm doing bam, bam, bam here, and he's unconscious, which way do you think his body's going to go? Down. down. It's going to go down, and if, he, if I'm attached to him, I'm going to feel this sudden pull and slump. In fight, which is chaotic, you're probably so high of adrenaline, you're not cognitive. There's no visual intel, because your tunnel vision is very close and it's dynamic and it's moving. So you're not getting intel of the effect your hard skills are having by what you see. But by holding on to him, you're tactile. So you will feel the effect your strikes are having. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what that means is, if I hit him with a good shot here, boom, and I feel this slumping body weight, I can feel that the effect, or the hard skills had the effect I want, hit the big red stop button in my brain and cease to continue my soul. Because the objective of using any of this shit for real in a self-protection situation would have been, it has to be out of an act of sheer desperation. Because could you have avoided it? You should have. Could you have escaped? You should have. Could you have de-escalated? You should have. And you should most certainly never incite this. In which case, you're only going to get physical if soft skills have failed. Which means now you have to employ hard skills the idea would be one shot and he's down, it's clinical, but life's not ideal, so you've got to train for the what if. 
or if he's a tough bastard and they've not just got to keep going. In which case, as soon as you hit him, you should index to the target. If I index to the target, I can maximise my impact by pulling him onto it. This will give me a collision effect, like two vehicles hitting head on. The other reason is, it's a tactile sensory antenna. It tells me, like I just said, if he falls, I can turn it off. Conversely to that, if I still feel the energy of him struggling, pushing and pulling, that tells me he's still dynamic. That tells me he's still in the fight and I need to continue. Do you understand where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah. So I want him to give you energy that says, fuck you, I'm still here, which means you've got to keep hitting. And inside of that somewhere, I wanted him to give you energy of, okay, yeah, I've had enough. And I want you to recognise that and cease. This is useful to be able to get a control on your use of force under fight stress. Because what you do should be reasonable and necessary and no more. That's difficult to judge. But what it isn't is an act of retribution, which means if he's knocked out and he's unconscious and I'm still pounding him, now I'm the one that's the aggressor. And that's not what we're looking for. Do you understand? Yeah. Right? So he's down to give you the energy. Come on. Right, so from here you get a nice attachment on the garment. Yeah? What he's going to keep doing as I'm pulling is going to keep constant tension of pulling backward. So I can feel that. Him and I need to continue. But somewhere inside of that is where he's going to give me that slump. And when he gives me that slump, I want to be able to, because I'm attached to him, control his descent. So if I've knocked him out and he's unconscious and I'm still holding him, should I let go of him and hit him one more time? So that his head impacts the ground? Absolutely not. Because that's why people die. When you read that, man gets punched. One punch dead wasn't punched. It's the pavement. So I want you to protect yourself, I don't want you to go to prison doing it. Mm. So if I'm attached, I can argue that I control his descent with the intention of doing the same. And I stopped when he ceased to be resistant. Does that make sense? Yes. That's good. All right, so you drill. Let's work it slowly for the benefit of you, because his back's hurting. I'm going to go, bam, 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 and somewhere he's going to give me that. And I'm going to cease. He's much faster, much more dynamic. But like I said, he's nursing an injury, right? Conversely to that, yeah. he might give me the energy where he's totally resistant. He feels a proper turning shot and then he drops. But it would certainly be somewhere between three and five. Let's be realistic. Yeah. If I'm on the new hitting you that hard, I ain't hitting you more than five times before you're reacting. Yeah. So if you, your partner's allowing you to hit 10, 15 times, you're not being realistic. No. Yeah, so you get the point yeah. somewhere between one, three, uh, somewhere between three and five, you're going to get the energy of dropping, and in between that, you're going to get constant resistance. Yeah, so you're working your sensory antenna. Let's see if I can work it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Nice and tight, keep that attachment. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Drops. 
to the dictator when the drill stops. Right, get ready. Go! Press! 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 Push! 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 Good. Back up one more time. If you want to do more, I'll do this. And drop. Wow. I've got to turn to work with this anyway. Right, get ready. Go! Press! 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 Good. Right. See how he wanted to go forward? You need to anticipate and go straight to the side. You want to end up in this position, okay? You'll get the feel of it. One more time, just a demonstration. Pass, pass, pass. Good, All right. You're gonna do this. I just want to give you one other tip, okay? Because I'm trying to actually stop his head from hitting the floor, it's not only a case of grabbing hold of him and keeping hold of him. What you really want to do, and you'll find this out yourself, is as he falls, you actually want to pull up. Yeah, because I'm not really going to stop him from hitting the floor. It's very unlikely unless I'm really fucking big and strong. He fucking is really sore and I'm going to hit him and catch him and hold him up. When he goes dead weight, he's close to fucking rip, he will fall, hold, go forward. All I can really do is slow his descent down. I'm just looking like to, to minimise the damage of him hitting his head on the floor. Okay? So, important thing, you hit, you move to the side. When you move to the side and he drops, try, where possible, to pull up. Okay? Right, so get hold of your partner. Remember, three times, and then hit the deck. Get ready. Go! Good. Back up. Stand in front of your partner. What I want you to do is I want you to come to the end and you to move up. Okay? That's it. Move up one. You to come to the end. Hold on to your partner. Very tight, very tight. Get ready. Go! Good, move up again. You can see why I'm doing this so you get different shapes and sizes. One last time. Go! Push, push, push! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's falling somewhere in between that and that. So as soon as I grab, just lose your energy to the ground. You know, I'm going to go here, but I'm going to feel that. And I'm either going to like I just have rather than get pulled forward, move my energy to the flank, which is what he's giving you and still control his fall, or somewhere between me grabbing him and him falling, here, but I'm here. And even if I lose it now, I've taken part of the resistance of his fall out. It wasn't the maximum, it was me. It wasn't that. It was, I've pulled him and then he's hit the ground. So it's the difference between his head impacting the ground from here to there, that velocity, or from here where I'm still holding him to here where I've lost him. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that can be the difference that makes the difference. And like you said, at least you've tried. Yeah. Yes? yes I'm driving in chin rip. I'm going to take the eye and just turn the target. And literally from here, just going to pound, pound, boom, and then pound again. And it's going to be man down. So you can push it through chin, chin, chin ripping, pounding, boom, and elbow into finish. Understand the drill? Yeah. Right. So your first count, give him the pump. Give it to him. First count, literally, is going to be. Concussively, boom, pull it in. From there, reach around. When you reach around, this is a shot. This is a shot. I'm reaching and grabbing the face. This hand slaps the face. From here, I want the contour, the ledge. So that could be two fingers in the eye, two fingers taking the contour of the mouth, it could be the ledge of bone of the lunge or the chin. Anything I can get to rip the head around, I'll take. So I'm here, when I pull it in, I'm reaching. And I'm just taking the eye and putting him here. I'm taking him to my shoulder, putting myself at arm's length. And I'm just going to pound, pound, and pound again until he's out. Understand? Yeah. So you drill it, impulsively clean, drill for the chimney. Notice I'm using body mechanics. Then pound, pound, <laughs> elbow to finish. Got it? Yeah. Let's Ready? Two! Hands up! Three! One, two, three, 